Hi, my name is Kimberly Laney. I'm a Crow researcher from the University of Arizona, and today I'm here to guide you through checking consents and collecting data. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of how to keep track of consents based on our experience with Crow and Macaws. Then I will give a few examples of how data can be collected using Crow, Macaws, and other corpus development projects involving student papers. If you need IRB approval for collecting data for your corpus, after your IRB application is approved, the next step is to check the consents of your research participants. This is especially essential in cases where you may have access to more data than you have consents for, as is the case with student papers that are shared via a course management system. Having a system of keeping track of who has consented and who has not is essential for ethical data collection. In addition, regardless of your consenting process, you also need to think about how you are going to collect data for your corpus. First, for keeping track of consents, we have found that creating a spreadsheet with consenting students' names has been helpful for organizing this process. Here's an example of a spreadsheet that is similar to what we use. In this spreadsheet, each sheet includes consenting students from a particular instructor and course that are included in the Crow corpus. Once you have all the information about consenting participants ready and organized in one place, you can start collecting data. There are different ways to collect this data. Using our context of student papers as an example, you can collect papers directly from students through a digital form such as Qualtrics or JotForm. However, this can take a lot of time and effort. Another way of collecting data is by working with instructors who can give access to student papers. In our experience, we have found that this allows for a more streamlined process. What we do is contact instructors at the end of the semester with a list of consented students from their class. The spreadsheet we showed earlier in the video can facilitate this process. To make sure that there is no conflict of interest for the instructors, you can wait to provide instructors with that information of the consented students after their final grades have already been submitted. In order to not burden instructors with more work than is needed, we found that many instructors are willing to share access to their learning management systems or LMSs, such as D2L or Blackboard. That way, instructors do not have to do any of the downloading of the student papers. Once you have access to the LMS, you can use the spreadsheet with consenting students that you created previously to download only the papers from the consented students. Another option is to batch download all student papers from a given instructor's course for a given assignment or draft. If you do this, you'll then have to go in and delete papers from the non-consenting students. Sometimes instructors might not want to share access to their LMS or prefer to be more actively engaged in the process of data collection. In this case, You'll have, you can offer them a second option, which is submitting the consented student papers to a secure drive. We use Box for this purpose, as it is approved by our IRB. You should check with your local IRB to see where they prefer you store identical, identifiable student data. One final tip is that if you are directly collecting papers from a learning management system, you may want to contact your IT office to see if you could automatically scrape your LMS. The key here is whether an API is available. We unfortunately have not been able to use this method for our own data collection at the University of Arizona, since D2L, which is our learning management system, does not have an API. We hope this video has been helpful for explaining the step of the corpus building process. The next step will be to organize your data. We hope you check out our video on that process as well.